Welcome to this video where I will be describing how to rotate a player in both directions, up and down, left and right, how to add clamps so that you are limited when you go, let's say, to the right, to the left, down, and up. And you can do this in both third person and first person. So if you're creating a third person shooter or a first person shooter, this method that I'm about to go over applies to both. So let's get started. Depending on what type of game you're creating, you either have your player, uh, which can be right in front of you, or you could be a first person game. So let's say a first person shooter, in which case you are essentially the camera. So I'm going to show essentially from both perspectives how to get the rotation down. Just so that we can actually see we're rotating, I'm gonna create a couple of objects in our scene so that we can kind of understand what's gonna be in front of us. So we're gonna have a cube straight in front of us. Let's say we create a sphere. Why don't we move that to the left? So that will be to our right though. And then we can create a capsule and We'll move that to what will become our left. And then I'm going to put another object behind our player. All right. So right now we can't see that cylinder. And if we click play right now, you can't move at all. I'm moving my mouse. Nothing's happening. And that is so far so good. Now all you need to do is create one script. You can do that by right clicking, create, C sharp. I already have mine. I named it player rotation. You can open that up. Now depending on if you want to limit both the X rotation. So if you want to just rotate this way or you want to rotate this way they're more or less steps. So let's say we want to rotate in the X direction. So we need to create this rotate X and this is gonna be how much we're gonna rotate by. Then this is gonna be if you wanna do Y. This is gonna be our speed. So here we do set the speed, but it's public again, so you can set it inside the inspector or if you wanna make this private, it's up to you. And then we're gonna create a private game object camera. So by the fact that we're setting this that game object equal to camera, it means that we're gonna be assigning this script to the camera. And whatever we do to this, it's happening to the camera. So that's why it's this. Now this cursor.visible line, I'll, um, I'll get into in a moment actually why we need that. It's not crucial, but it looks a lot better, but I'll get into that later. So right now, this line, line 32, is what's going to make you, allow you to move left and right. However, let's say you want your player to be stationary and just turning. You don't necessarily want your player to be able to, let's say, turn their entire head. So that's why you sometimes want to add a clamp. And I'll demonstrate that um, with and without. So before we can play, we need to change the rotation. So this is essentially saying how much we want to change the X rotation by. And down here is where we're actually changing that rotation. And as you can see, we're changing the X rotation. It's technically the second value because if we want to change our X rotation, it's actually going to be the Y value because it is along the Y axis. So even though we want to be facing a different X direction, again, you're turning on the Y axis. So make sure to keep that in mind. Right now, this is simply going to turn left and right, and there's not gonna be any limit. So if we were to play our game right now, as you can see, we can move, but there's also no limit to how much we can move. And that's why we can see all around us. All right, so if we get out of there, then I'm not sure if you saw before, but the reason why that's super weird, that was that cylinder we added, but for some reason, 
it was above the camera, so that's why it looked like it was above. And now we can see that we can see completely behind us. And so we're making 360 turns. But if you don't want that, then that's why we're about to add this clamp. So this clamp is going to clamp the X value so we can save that. And then let that load, play. And this time we won't be able to see that cylinder because even though I'm going to the right, and even though I'm going to the left, it's blocking that off. In terms of the values I set them to, those can be changed, whatever your preference is. Um, if you want to go more to the left, you'd change this value, more to the right, you'd change this value. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with if you're rotating up and down. So let's say if you're looking at the sky versus you're looking at the ground. So this line, Line 37 is, again, going to change that Y value, and this is going to be our clamp. Now, the clamp can be useful because you don't want your player to be able to look behind um, his or her head and kind of like roll your head up because that's not realistic. Again, the reason why this is um, in the first position, that's because it's the float X. And don't be confused because if we go to our main camera and we change, so this is looking up down if you look at rotation that's our x value that's changing so again although it might seem odd now also if you see when we look up for some reason it's a negative and that's why over here we're subtracting by rotation y so that's quite important i'm going to save this script and then we can play to see this y rotation or technically along the x-axis, and there's not going to be any limit to that again because we didn't put the clamp. So as you can see, I'm going in above, and then I can go super down. That is not what we want at all, and that's why we're going to set this clamp. Now this clamp is going to make sure I can't do exactly what I just did. And unlike before, we cannot go, it stops, and then it stops. Now the reason why I had this cursor visible is, as you saw when we play this, you can see the cursor, which sometimes in your game you don't want. So if you're playing this, it's, it can be a bit distracting to have that cursor there. And that line, it simply gets rid of the cursor so it just becomes um, invisible so cursor dot visible equals false and then this time when we play the cursor is not there as you can see however if you do let's say we want to go up once it's out of this little frame it's gonna reappear so keep that in mind but while you're playing you don't have that issue and we have our boundaries. If you are creating a third person game, so a third person shooter, let's say, you do want to be able to see your player. So um, you can do that by making your player a child of the main camera. So let's say we want our player to be a cube. As we can see, our camera is right here. And the reason we can't see the cube right now is because the cube is actively on the camera. So we need to give some sort of position, an offset essentially from the camera. So because this is third person, we're gonna make it in front. You can change how much in front, so that might not be best. You might wanna put it a little more in front, or you might even wanna make the scale of this cube smaller. So that's something for you to play around, although if you're creating a third person game I'm sure that's one of the first things you've done but even there there's our player that might be have been a little too small so maybe we want to scale that maybe half the size of each and again if you're creating a third person game this is gonna be one of the first things you do but this rotation still works so your player again is at the center of everything and that block is still there, still there, 
still there. And there's your clamps. And again, if you only want it, let's say you only want it in the Y direction. So let's say you only want to look up and down. Again, you'd set this to zero and you wouldn't have this. And then you wouldn't need this um, float X at all, wrote X at all. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have found it useful and you can implement it into your own project.